All right, there's one thing that the three of us did really well as our careers grew in the fitness space. We trained successful trainers. Here's what we found. These are the wrong reasons to become a personal trainer. Number one, to make a lot of money. Number two, oh look, it's a fun and easy job. Number three, I just love working out. And number four, I wanna be in the gym all day long. Those are terrible reasons <laughs> to become a personal trainer. Here are the reasons that we found successful trainers became successful trainers or became personal trainers themselves. They had a passion for helping people and their favorite hobby was exercise. Those two things are more guaranteed to make you successful than almost anything else. So take note, don't become a trainer unless those two things you identify with. You know what's funny is one of them I don't think ever existed until recently with the explosion of social media. Make money? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was never a thing. Yeah. Like when you, when I used to do interviews. So misleading. Yeah, yeah. When I used to do the interviews and have a, a, like interview trainer, potential trainers, and they come in, uh, never once did, when I asked them why you want to do this, did they say like, I heard I could make a lot of money yeah, doing yeah. this. That was not a thing back then. You hear that then. now. You yeah. hear that now. Oh, you, wow. Because, uh, again, because we have these examples of, uh, I mean, God, we were just, I was just on it. Speaking of people like this, uh, the guy, the uh, Sam Solik, is that how you say his last yeah, name? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, guy came out of nowhere. I mean, show, they I showed, a, I saw Mark Bell shared a video of uh, his uh, meet and greet. I don't know if it's the first oh, one. Oh, crazy did, crowd. Yeah, like insane. I mean, and this guy just came from like just a year ago and no one knew who he huh. was. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, that exists today, right? This ability to become instantly famous and potentially make a lot of money as a, as a trainer, but you're right though. I, 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 I agree that it's the, it's not what's going to make you successful. No, you know? because number one, it's a hard way to make, there's a lot easier ways to make a lot of money than to become a personal trainer. It's not an easy way to make money. It's definitely not the kind of job that unless you have a deep passion for helping people, you will not find it fun and easy. First of all, it's hard. It's one of those jobs where if you succeed, 30% of the time, let's say you get people results and they can maintain those results 30% of the time, you're better than 99% yeah, of the other Better than the world. average. Easy. Like name any other job like that where you fail 70% of the time and you're and you're killing it. Um, it's it, it, Okay, you like working out, that'll get old at some point because you're not going to be training a lot of fitness fanatics like yourself. Very few trainers actually make a, a living training other fitness fanatics. Most people that you'll train or everyday people who won't have a passion for, no matter what you do, they'll never have a passion for fitness like you do. And then loving to be in the gym all day long. I get that. I used to love that as well. Uh, but it is a busy, overstimulating, go, go, go. The schedule is not conducive to a normal life. Like you're going to be there in the morning. You're going to be there at night. You're yeah. going to be off in the middle of the day. If you know, that's typically you're just the schedule feeding like. yeah, your, your habit. Like your, your, your place where you want to hang out yeah. at that point. You're not really like, uh, pulling yourself out like financially and, and, and getting ahead. It's like, okay, now I got my, my thing established. I like, and it's good to like what you're doing and like, um, you know, working in, in the industry you want to work in, but also to like, uh, uh, to be somewhat, uh, financially ahead. Like it's a tough place to be when it, you're comfortable. I got, it is, but you know, it's the, the passion for helping people is what will pull you through all the challenging clients, you'll have more of those than you will not. Yeah, It's what's going to pull you through the hours that it requires. I mean, I, you know, working 40 hours a week in a regular job is not like working 40 hours a week as a personal trainer. 40 hours a week as a personal trainer is you're on every No, hour. I mean, we- you, There is no break. 30 hours breaks. is considered full-time in, yeah. in yeah. the training space. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's just, it's rough. But if you have a deep passion for helping people and you love fitness, uh, you know, it's like, it's like one of your favorite things to do. Then you can learn how to make it a career. And if those things drive you, so long as you get the right training, the right mentorship, then yes, you can definitely build a career doing it. But there's so many, the turnover for personal trainers is so high mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people don't, they don't have those things. Or if they do have those things, they never get the training to learn how to become successful. Because those also, by the way, the, the two that I mentioned, passion for helping people and you love, you know, exercise those aren't going to guarantee you success either. You, those are just the things that'll pull you through the tough times. You still have to learn how to build a business. You have to learn how to work with every, every Tom, Dick and Harry and every difficult person. You have to learn how to help people. You have to learn how to like accept the fact that, you know, you got your textbook and there's gonna be people are gonna be outliers all the time. You know? Well, shout out to our, our partners, our friend, 
Jason over at NCI and their team and what a wonderful job they're doing because we just recently had what 10 trainers 10 or 12 we have 10 or 12 11 i believe 11 11 yeah. trainers mm -hmm. split the difference yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> show up for uh the event that we had just put on right so we just did something special for the the business and program that we're launching and uh, i think almost all if not all of them had gone through that mm -hmm. so and most of these were all uh elite coaches right these mm -hmm. are coaches that have been coach uh, coaches the the youngest coach was two years yeah, that was so, the only rookie, I think. Yeah, she, she was considered the rookie of all of them. But all of them uh, have been uh, successful uh, in all different levels of success and, and ranging all the way, I think, to 15 years, uh, one of the coaches. so, And I think all of them had gone through uh, NCI. So a testament to the good work that they're doing in, in coaching and uh, teaching trainers how to be better communicators yeah. around nutrition, Build which systems, I think, yeah. I think, I think uh, communicating nutrition has to be one of the more difficult things way and, harder than exercise yeah because we're it's it's become like a religion right and mm -hmm. so you know just like trying to talk about religion to somebody that's like one of the things they say don't say don't do but yet as a trainer you have to because yeah. that's your job is to help and educate around that so it really does take uh, a special kind of trainer to navigate those waters to be able to have those discussions well with exercise uh exercise hard too right keeping people consistent you got to learn about biomechanics and exercise programming like i'm not gonna make light of that that's all um a lot of knowledge and it's hard but when a client shows up they're you, they, you train them so if they see you twice a week three days a week you train them and so long as they kind of do what you say and you, you coach them well it's okay diet is with them all day every day when you're not there and there's more bad relationships and behavior issues tied to diet so i wouldn't tackle diet with clients until much later i didn't even tackle it's in early days and I'm sure you guys did this too. You did everything, right? Diet, exercise, the whole deal. Yep. But then you start to figure out, like, let's get the exercise part first. Yeah. Let's get you stronger. Let's get you feeling better through workouts. And then we're going to slow play this diet part because that's the tough part. That's the part where people really have a, lot, a lot of, of pushback. Yeah. A lot of pushback and a lot of challenges. But, you know, um, even like I said, with, with passionate trainers who really want to help people, the big challenge at that point, and you talk to any fitness manager, any gym manager, or you talk to any of these top coaches at NCI who coach other coaches, they'll tell you that you get those people, those trainers, then it becomes hard to convince them that they need to learn how to build a business and sell. Yeah. Because then they're like, I don't want to sell, build a yeah. I just want to help people. So, okay, until you make millions of dollars and you can volunteer all your services, you have to figure out how to do this. Otherwise, I won't support you. Uh, but if you don't start from that, like I can't, it's, it's, it's so, it would be so hard. Imagine how impossible it would be to take somebody who didn't really have a passion for helping people to teach them how to become, you know, a good trainer. That yeah. would be, you know, super, super challenging. Well, I remember you normally get one or the other, right? I feel like you get the, the trainer who's super passionate about helping people, but they're totally adverse to selling. Yeah. I, do, I do not want to sell or you get the guy or girl who who loves to sell, just wants to close deals, and then they have no morals or values, so they don't <laughs> they want to help people. So it's like you, as a as a as a trainer or a, a, a leader of trainers, I guess that one of the challenges I always had was finding that that blend. Typically, right. where I had my success was I realized that getting the the trainer who all they cared about was making money and there was that trainer, to getting them to care was much more difficult than getting the one who cared mm -hmm. and teaching them how yes. to become an effective yes. communicator and salesperson. Yes. Yeah. Because I think a lot of hard, but man, I yeah, yeah. I think what happens is that the people that don't like to sell, they have a bad taste in their mouth for whatever reason. Maybe they had a bad experience themselves or they had a family member that was in sales and or they have this connection to somebody who was a salesperson and they don't like them. Therefore they don't like sales. Mm -hmm. And then you would have to kind of unpack that work on that. And then explain to them that really, really you're in, you're on, you're in sales. No matter whether you like it or not, you're on sale all the time. People are watching you and you are presenting yourself and presenting what you, your business that you represent, you're selling your ideas to your clients on what you want them to do or not do. Oh. And so there's no way around it. If you want this profession, you have to be good at sales. It's the greatest, it's the greatest, most challenging sales job of all time. I'll, yeah. I'll say that all day long. In fact, when, when I do the, there's a three day course I'm doing for trainers in January, um, you could sign up for. And one of the, one of the, the topics I'm going to cover and do some in-depth training on is uh, effective communication also known as sales, sales skills. Now, why is coaching and personal training a sales job? 
uh, for, forget the fact that you're trying to sell them personal training or sell them a product. That's not what I'm talking about. It's that you're trying to sell them on how, on, on why they should fundamentally change their behaviors. Yeah. And I'm going to, and here's a, here's the kicker. You're, you're like reframing everything. The, and then here, here's a spoiler. You're not going to sell them on it by telling them they're going to look good. You're not going to sell them on it by telling them they're going to lose weight. You're not going to sell them on it by telling them they're going to be attractive and sexy. They've already sold themselves on that idea and it doesn't work. They still fail. So you have to find other ways of communicating to each individual. It's very different from person to person. That's what makes it so, so challenging. How do I communicate doing things the right way? How do I communicate taking small steps when this person is in this motivated state of mind, just wants to jump, you know, head first? How do I communicate to this person that this, that the way that their friend lost 30 pounds isn't going to work for, not, not just not for the friend, even though they lost the weight, they'll gain it back, but definitely not work for them. Or how do I communicate to, to them that this is a fad? Or that that works, that this doesn't work, that, you know, yeah, I know you think beating yourself up is going to get you there faster, but it's not. Like, how do I sell that effectively? And it can't just say, well, it's the right way to do it. It's like, no, no, you got to find a, a way to say it to somebody so that it, it, it makes them want to do it more than what the other guys tell them, which is lose 30 pounds in 30 days, take this pill, do this yeah. special workout or follow this crazy weird, you know, diet type of thing. The, the three day talk that you're doing it's uh hour long sessions yeah they're recorded yep. so you know if you if you register for it but you can't make the date you'll still get a recording but session. if you're there live then you're gonna get you, to talk to all of us right because yeah. then you so adam and justin are going to be on there answering questions live and so you can just interact and go yeah. and ask us anything we're going to put it all out there so this is cool because if you've been around for a long time um you might have got to experience when we did the train train the trainers for free so we did this thing, a live event. God, how many years is it? Five years now? More, maybe more? There was more? a few gyms locally. We didn't even go that far out yeah. away from like, you I, we, know, where we we're We must based. have done like four gyms maybe? Yeah. 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 Something like that. So this is kind of uh, our idea of doing something similar to that, only reaching people all over the world, right? Because mm -hmm. it's going to be a live, you know, Zoom call or yeah. whatever. Is it full, the platform we're using? Is Zoom or are we using? I Zoom? believe it's Zoom, yeah. yeah. Look, full disclosure, we're trying to unify people and they help people through health space, which, in, which encompasses fitness, medicine, wellness, functional medicine, obviously probably mostly personal trainers because that's who we connect to the most, but try to unify them under this kind of common philosophy. And then, you know, I'm going to teach some of the most important things. And then we'll have an announcement at the end of, of some stuff that we're working on, but you're going to leave with some really, really good, you know, tools. So speaking of crazy and tools, I know you guys saw the video of, by the way, I'm so glad we recorded when I told you guys the Cybertruck was going to crush, you guys made fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember you guys, oh, it sucks. It's going to oh tank, whatever. We were, just, we were just questioning the design of it as uh, I suspect, still think it's ugly. like I triangle, it. I Doritos. I it, I does fit, it. it does fit you, though. I it's, mean, it, you yeah. should get one. Yeah, I do it's, think it's you weird should get like one. Me. I mean, it's it's cool. Like I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't. If someone gave it to me, I wouldn't give it away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I oh, it's, it's so. Was that uh, that little drag racing stunt Bro, real? That's with real. The, yeah, with yeah. The it's races, Porsche races a 911. So it races a 911. It, it beats a 911 turbo in the quarter mile while towing another 911 turbo. Yeah, great marketing. That is the most insane. Yeah. Did you see that video, Doug? I did. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. it's crazy. You no, know, the torque and acceleration. The other day, I was getting on the freeway and I saw a truck. Carrying two cyber trucks. Oh, really? Yeah. How looking person? Oh, I, I mean, it they're actually, big, huh? it actually grabbed my attention because they're so unusual looking. They yeah, actually you look much I more. Seen, I haven't seen one on the street. They yet. look very formidable just in in person, right? Yeah, much more so than when you look at them on a video. Well, so so the thing about Elon that's incredible. First off, he has so much celebrity and pull that uh, I think <laughs> it's hard for him not to sell something and people want to get it just because of him. But he's got he's so um, he's so good with pop culture. Yeah. So like in the Tesla, you know, ludicrous speed on their, their yeah. Tesla model, right. whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's from Spaceballs. Space yeah. Yeah. And it literally makes if you've ever seen Spaceballs. Going Space plaid. Balls, I'm yeah, sure there goes plaid. Going on plaid. You've seen yeah, that on the screen, yeah, right? Yeah. So this is like a like an ode to Blade Runner. Yeah. So it's got that design, that kind of Blade Runner design, and you know the tires look the way they do, and then he you know he made it so that it's essentially bulletproof. I mean, you, I mean, there was that what Joe Rogan shot it with an arrow and yeah. it, like bounced right off. Yeah, and the windows you could like hit him with a bat, nothing will happen. Like, meanwhile, like it's so funny to me because it's a tank. It, you, you just see the obvious like salty haters out there. Like, so a lot of the I still follow a lot of the tech magazines uh, oh, yeah. from Silicon Valley and like TechCrunch and like Mashable and all those kind of 
in any given opportunity, they're going to throw shade. So they start posting, you know, when they had that uh, promotional video out, they'll put up the, the old one of when the guy like punches or like throws a rock and it, it breaks the window. It, it was a metal ball that he threw at it. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I don't know. I just find it in like, it's so like weak, you know, <laughs> like that that's like, you're just showing your Dude, colors right away. Of- Speaking of weak, I follow, there's this page on Facebook called, I think it's called Futurism. And so it's kind of like a tech page or whatever, uh-huh. but they have a boner for going against or making Elon look bad. And it's so obvious. In fact, if you look at the comments, everybody on there is like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So you know how he went, he was got, he got interviewed by New York times. We talked about this and he's yeah. like, he said to the, the advertisers all pulling Go advertising. fuck yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, hey Bob. Iconic moment. Right. Yeah. Uh, Futurism posted and said, you know, uh, Elon Musk throws a tantrum on, an embarrassing tantrum on stage. <laughs> oh, God. Bro, I read the comments. <laughs> Every single person on there was like, it was the greatest thing tantrum. ever. Yeah, he's super based and authentic and he doesn't give a shit. This is what we, this is the kind of billionaires we need. I'm like, man, they're so out of touch Yeah, Dude. with what people actually, you know, think about that. But what is it? What do you think is going to happen? I think there's, it's because, uh, and he was like speaking to Disney, I think like straightforward. Did right? you see yeah. they've lost thousands Bob, of subscribers because they- of that? Yeah. So I, I, I've been meaning to look up and see, cause I know that I know the stock obviously has been hurting for like the last year, but I wanted to see what, what, how much they're losing right now. I don't like know. That's a good question. And it's funny cause they feel it into They're Let's like, see. they're putting out stuff, like they're making adjustments and it's just like, I, it's interesting to me cause you'll see like now they're, they're saying like, well, maybe we should kind of back off a little bit on always trying to like add in our, uh, uh, ideology and things with every one of the stories. Like it's good to tell a good story and just leave the story. They're saying that you're hearing that. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah, like Bob, I, yeah, Bob Iger's starting to say that. And it's, I think, I mean, you, if you're at that point where now you have to admit like, Oh wow, maybe I guess our playbook's a little off. Like there's been enough of an influx of bombs where it's like, we got to account for this. Well, let's see Bud Light signed with the UFC to save themselves. Yeah. So maybe what, what are they going to do? Sign with Joe Rogan or something? Well, I, to- <laughs> you I told you what they were going to do, which is they're, they're, they're putting a massive investment back into the theme parks. And I do think it's a brilliant uh, pivot. Yeah. I do think that, um, you know, yeah, slow- people have a really soft, you know, warm place in the heart. Yeah. Slowing down their, I, I know they're famous for the Disney classics, right? I mean, that's one of the, the, that's all iconic, right? All the, all the Disney classics that we all know of growing up. But I think the idea of going hard in the direction of the in-person experience is a smart play. And mm-hmm. I think it's a really smart play right now. Now that we, we, we've gone through this decade of, you know, being virtually connected and every, every company is pushing VR and, and the whole virtual world and everything that for them to invest in, like bringing us back together in person, I think that's a smart move and who better to lead it than a, a massive, you know, family type company like that. I know there's a lot of hate around them. They can pivot. Yeah. yeah I they think can so. pivot. Yeah. I, I think so too. Yeah. And I think they can. I, I, and I think they will. I yeah. mean, at some point money, you know, talks. And you just like, you know, it just looks like a bunch of executives that were really like really doubling, tripling down on trying to, um, uh, present like certain propaganda and ideas. And, and, you know, if they just don't do that quite as much, it's, you know, the audience will forgive and, them for it. And then you have pop culture, like, uh, South Park poking at them so elegantly and accurately and bluntly. Yeah. Like, how do you, like. You can't it, deny truth. Man. No, it's, it was so well it's right done. Right there, everybody sees it. Yeah, and you're watching. You, you know what they were saying. What were they saying? Like, you know, re- remake the movie. Put a, uh, you know, a female lead. Make her lesbian. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah. like every yeah. that was the answer to everything for almost yeah every franchise. So I know, and yeah. I was like, man, they yeah. they really did a good job. Those so, South Park guys yeah, are yeah. just amazing. Have, did you guys watch any more uh, Christmas movies over the weekend? Did you guys have you have you guys been chipping away yet or what? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I watched Home Alone. Yeah. I've watched, uh, Elf, right? I heard you Elf. say. I watched, oh, Elf. I did watch Elf. Um, Christmas Vacation was the first one I started with. And then, yeah, then I fell off. You know what my favorite I think is? And I like Elf is up there. And so is National Lampoons. Those are up there. Like I can't, you could easily yeah. slot those in. But, uh, uh, um, I guess it's more recent. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's around Elf time. Four Christmases. Oh, is, I knew you were going to say that. Four Christmases. I've heard that Vince from a lot Vaughn, of people. Right? Yes, dude. It's really good. Katrina and I love yeah. that one. That one makes me laugh every You know who he reminds me of? Hmm. Vince Vaughn? Hmm. Our good friend Jason. Phillips? 
No. Mercucci? No, yeah. Oh, oh my Tell Mercucci. me that Vince Vaughn does oh, not yeah, remind yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They similar have, personality. Yeah, yeah, they get a similar humor. Every hum time I similar see Similar humor. So similar. Is this, this is more of an adult one, though, right? It's all yeah. adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all adult. Okay. It's, yeah, it's literally, the, the, the premise is hilarious, right? And I think maybe why Katrina and I like it, because we were uh, single for so long and, and not settling down. Yeah. We waited a long time to even have kids. And so it's literally this couple that have chose not to get married, have chose not to have kids, just travel. They both are very financially successful. And in, on the Christmas holiday, they lie to their family always and tell them that they're doing, they're like donating their time to kids. Or they're, but they're, or they're really just going to Hawaii. Yeah, they're going yeah. to Fiji or they're going to these places, but then they tell the families yeah. and they get caught, right? So that's how the show opens okay, up okay. is they're going to Fiji. Everybody in the family thinks that they're off, you know, saving children in Africa or something. And then yeah. The news, like the 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 airport delays, yeah. and so the news is there to record everybody, and, and they, they get caught they get camera. caught on camera, uh, and then the families call them out, and so they have to do four Christmases in one day. They have to go see four of the families, and each of their parents are d divorced. Okay, so they got to go to each. So mom they go to and, mom's mom's house, dad's house, yes, mom's house, dad's house, and uh, it's just just it's pure. All yeah, gonna, yeah it's like pure comedy. Out. It's like you get the type of two people that would that would drive away, not want to be with yeah. family on Christmas for those reasons. And then they're forced to, and it's just, it's iconic. The, the, be, the yeah. best, yeah. Great. the best characters on there are with the character. The brothers. Vince yeah, dude. Yes. Yeah. The UFC kick his brothers. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> all <laughs> shows up. They start fighting them. You know? Yeah. That's great. And then one of them has kids with the, like his wife's got all these kids or whatever. And it's just the stuff she says about, yeah. The, so uh, Courtney and I have one. We usually watch it like uh, the night before. Cause it's like, and that might even be what it's called, the movie. It's with Seth Rogen. Uh-huh. Uh, and he they, they wear like the Christmas sweaters and like he's Jewish, but he wears like the Hanukkah one. And uh and the whole premise is like basically one of the guys, like his parents died like a long time ago. And so they kind of like created this this sort of uh like ritual that they would do every time where they would like party really hard and all this. And so it's, it's some like grandiose, like Christmas party they're trying to get into and all this stuff. But so they, they take like all these drugs and everything. And so Seth Rogen at one point, he like stumbles into a church and like, he's kind of in there with his wife and his wife's family. He was supposed to be on his own. His wife gave him all these drugs and he's like, yeah, oh, I'm going to take them all at once. And so he's, he's sitting in the pew and he's like, she was trying not to get him I've to come with him yeah, he's sitting in there sweating and then all of a sudden he gets up he's like we didn't kill jesus and he yeah. like gets out and he's like oh my god i lost my shit i don't so think i've funny. seen that one yeah. what's it yeah. called what's it called is it night before you said i think so i think it's called night before it was really funny. i saw really that i'm gonna put that yeah. on my list yeah. i saw that see yeah. I, like, I keep bringing it up because i like talking to people because i feel like every year i find one that somebody mm -hmm. else has got like a sleeper one for the kids if you guys haven't had your kids watch the um christmas prep prep and landing no. On, oh, what they're great. They're shorts. Oh, okay. So they're only like eight to 12 minutes long. Look up Prep and Landing from Disney, Doug, and show the guys. Oh, it is called the, Night Before. The kids, yeah, The Night Before. The Night Before is the one that you were talking about? Yeah. 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 Prep yeah. and Landing, I've seen that too. That's good. They're really good. Oh, okay. They're really, really good. There's like three of them, I think, and the and they're great little shorts so the kids Spe like them. Speaking of dating and stuff like that, I just read this interesting like study on big red flags that men will say are red flags for them. So, I mean, once you hear it, you'll be like, oh, of course, that's a red flag, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. So 64% of men said this particular thing it was a red flag. It was a red flag if a girl said this one thing. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, you guys are going to say obvious ones, I'm uh, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, but well, maybe something to do with your buddies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, of all your friends, you have the biggest penis. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's not a good one. <laughs> That's a terrible red flag. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. I'm angry and happy uh, for your kids. Make sure you watch those. those. Check those. So, 64 percent of men said that if a woman told them they were a communist, it was a red flag. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm what? Dying. I'm like, no shit. Wait, <laughs> that's <laughs> a course. thing. That's yeah. I guess that's that wouldn't even made my list. Is like, yeah. well, <laughs> well, I mean, would it be a red flag for you? Well, of course. Yeah. But I mean, of I, course. But so I wouldn't like. Did they give him like multiple choices? Yeah. So that was like, yeah, one. there was a bunch of them. But like how often does that come up? Is yeah, like no, my question. I mean, I don't know. It's, I thought it was <laughs> is that number one then? Is that the, 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 that was one of the biggest ones? That, but I mean, of course. Like, imagine you're on a date with a girl and a, you're hanging out. A literal red flag. Yeah. yeah. She's like, you know, yeah. we really should seize the means of production. I'd be like, huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> 
What do you mean? <laughs> well, you know, from each to their own. What's yours is mine. What's yeah, mine yeah. is yours. From each to their, their abilities to their own, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah, you know, I don't know about that. You know, do you, don't you hate capitalism? Like, uh, check, please. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's usually like real high maintenance stuff. Yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Uh, I'm trying to think of like specific examples, but. Well, when I was, when I was dating, it was uh, can't play video games with my buddies. I mean, that was like a. That was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or too much don't makeup you, and like it's too much like presentation. It's like, who am I dating? Oh. You know, like it's, it's not even the same person. Can I just tell you the worst, worst, worst thing? And it's more women than men, but some guys do this too at the gym where they wear hella perfume uh, at the uh, gym. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? I, Nauseating. I can't stand. Oh. So uh, I actually am like, Brutal. uh, I'm like allergic to like, colognes. yeah, you're really, yeah, yeah, I'm super sensitive to it. And all of the men in Katrina's family just love, 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 love. I know when her brother was, cause he, her brother will help the, you know, he's doing our moving. So yeah. You, oh yeah, bro. You give him a hug and after oh, like, oh shit. Yeah. I smell, <laughs> like, I smell like uh, cool water. Cool I, water whatever. Whenever, when, <laughs> and then when, old when, one, when, I still have when, it. I smell like Dracar. <laughs> Max goes over there. I gotta, I gotta give him a bath when he gets back home. Cause otherwise like the whole time I'm with him, I can, I can smell the cologne on him. I, you know, what's interesting about so uh, perfumes and colognes. Dang. Those are one of the worst offenders when it comes to xenoestrogens. The the chemicals oh, that, I believe it. that yeah. act like uh, that have kind of these weak hormonal effects on the body. Why is that? So why is the, why is, the chemicals that, how strong it is? Plus is that it's why? like the based off of whale throw up. So no, that's like yeah. like if you get like natural cologne, that's like super expensive. Like most that's colognes, expensive kind. Yeah, use chemicals, <laughs> and the chemicals that produce these smells are xenoestrogens. You know what's interesting about that market is that there's like only a handful of people that make like all the clones and perfumes. So they're like, like made, suppliers. And yes. There's like, like a, they're all like, and then they're branded. It's like glasses. Like, too, like frames, Calvin Klein and all these brands yeah. that everybody touts all something like that. Like they go, they all go to like the same source. Like look mm. this up. You can fact check me here. Dope. I can't remember. I, I want to say it's like in Switzerland or someplace. There's like a, a, a place where most all smell smells are made. And then big companies go and they buy that formulated smell the already. Smell and the, capital and the, of the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and they, they might add like a few notes or whatever to it, but it's the base. You yeah. know, if you think about it, it, I can't think of another product that doesn't sell what it actually does ever on commercials. Perfumes and colognes are never like, it smells good. <laughs> it's never that. It's always like Bro, weird music. Get and women, like, get men. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't even I say that. I just saw the latest one. You know that kid, the, the main kid from Dune, you know? Oh like, yeah, 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 the yeah. actor, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like every now and then you'll see he's like Giorgio or whatever. Like, and he it, the the commercial ad just starts with this, and it's just like it's like boom, yeah, <laughs> Whoa. Giorgio. I got uncomfortable. <laughs> that's it. It's like it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I love it. It's with yeah. like Brad Pitt. You know or what? With, you know, I'm I, like, huh? I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. The other product that doesn't tell you what it actually does in the commercial is alcohol. Like, you never see a beer commercial like get smashed. It's never like that. It's always like, yeah. But wait a minute, what does it really do? Perfume and cologne, they don't say what they do. It's not like this smells like whatever. It's always something super weird in it's, the commercials. It's always like, I, so yeah, weird. how do you like really portray that? Yeah. Yeah. Smell TV never, never, <laughs> never took. Did you know movie theaters at one point experimented with that? With what? Smell. What a in terrible the idea. Like, Misting out while you're watching, especially to compete with somebody's hot dog or like. I mean, popcorn. You, like uh, for like things like you Smell-O-Vision, know. I think they called it. Really, I, yeah, Doug. I think Smell-O-Vision. look up Smellovision. I mean, if it, he's still looking up at my thing. Is you ever, think, you <laughs> yeah. ever find my? What you I'm call? still looking for it. Really, yeah. Andrew, what are you doing over there? Picking your nose? That sphere oh. in uh, uh, Las Vegas. I'm sure that they're probably like experimenting with that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would imagine. Yeah, I but, mean, if you had like, uh, it was the '60s. I think in the '60s they were doing all kinds of weird shit with movie theaters to try yeah. and make them more. You know, more of an entertainment list yeah. of all the bad ideas. But imagine really. smell vision Gross. Yeah. It depends. Like if, <laughs> if they were if they were strategic about it, they did it like it like, like big good opportune here. moments where like it should smell good. Like you're in like a like a redwood forest and so you get like this kind of mist of like trees, you know, in the in the out. Yeah. Oh man, it feels like we're there. Evergreen. Or like you're yeah. at the ocean and you get the salty smell of the ocean. Like I could see like if you sprinkled That's more like a theme park, yeah. right? But that, you wouldn't want to no. smell everything, yeah. right? You wouldn't want like the guy in the movie you to drive fart past a you, pig oh, farm. Oh god, or something. what's that smell? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think you'd want you wouldn't want you wouldn't the, 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 the guy in front of you is like, <laughs> ruins my whole story. The, the, this the, the, smell doesn't add up. Yeah, Rocky training montages would not be great. <laughs> oh my god, Italian stallion. Damn. Oh, I hate that. It smells familiar though. Would you guys? Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you guys think of the Christmas party? That was great. Oh yeah, what yeah. You got, that was one of my favorite ones. I so think. I don't know how to pronounce it. Ferminich is a company since 1895 have been creating fragrances. I, I believe they're one of the biggest 
formulators okay. of oh, okay. perfumes. I, I don't know. It's tough right. to find. I, yeah, I, I think there's only a handful of them. Right, Christmas party. Shh. They're what based a great in vibe. Geneva. What, yeah. Okay. What a great vibe at the Christmas party. Yeah. Such a great time. Everybody yeah. there. That's my favorite one. It was bar. so good, man. That was my that was my favorite one. I had never seen. I like the bar set up and everything. Those great. TikTok thingies. What do we do? What do you call that, Andrew? What is it? What is the the spinny thing? Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. Old, spinny thing. Old yeah. Funny goodies. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's basically like the 360 video being yeah. taken around here. It's like, it, yeah. It's like a boomerang video, except so you're yes, standing on a 360 boomerang video. You're standing on a like, circle yeah. with people. You're facing out. They put their phone on it and they spin it around you and it records. And then you get this like. I didn't know what to do at first. So, I was like, what? And yeah. then once I figured it out, I was like. I oh, had well. no idea. Oh, well. So <laughs> shout out to, to to Margaret and Jerry and Katrina, the girls that put this put the thing together. Uh, Chokey, like they all. Uh, and, I mean, Katrina, helped, and I know, uh, I think your wife helped too. Courtney helped. Like she really like asked everybody, hey, what bring, they were all, they were meeting, right? Leading up to this. And it's always like, you know, what, what ideas do you have? And I believe it was Margaret's like, oh, you got to see this new viral TikTok thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. We could rent one of these. And Katrina's like, cool. Let's, uh, you know, so funny was I was yeah. asked to like pick the music and she's like, you know, give me a song. That's how Katrina asked me. Give me a song for the the uh the photo booth and i'm like a mm. song for the photo booth like explain it. and she you could tell she didn't want to tell me what she was wants to surprise be. you yeah and then and she wants to surprise me but then she wants me to choose a song yeah. so i just choose like one song that i like right and she's like that's a terrible song for this and i'm like well maybe if i had some more detail <laughs> on what i make like if i want to see like some a, context yeah i had no so they they, they totally threw away what my idea and the, the song they chose i thought was perfect well it was better it. than that mirror idea we had the other year oh uh, right? yeah, yeah yeah that like was the like, real mirror or something that kind of like, fell on its face right yeah. every year we have something a little different right that's kind of cool that uh, and you that, shouldn't do a mirror like people are supposed to like cry because they see their real self or whatever. that yeah. didn't happen no yeah. no don't have put a bunch of fitness people with more mirrors, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, especially one that's gonna we'll make see what they want to see dude self-conscious you know what i mean look yeah. at this mirror the bad lighting mirror you know what i mean terrible <laughs> idea for <laughs> Look how ugly you are in real life. Maybe ah, that's what we should have one year. One of those warped, you know, uh, I mirrors. I thought like, I fixed fun this house. problem. Yeah. Ah, you know, uh, I'm going home. Why? Now. I know. Anyway. So, uh, Adam, did I tell you guys? I was going to tell you, Adam. Did I tell you guys about the island that's for sale off the coast of San Francisco? Did I bring this up? No. On the show? No. I There's an island for sale off the coast of San Francisco. Let me pull this up. And, and the reason why I want to tell you guys about it is. You think it? Is it already occupied with. What? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do we call them now? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Homeless. Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, I gotta find it because <laughs> challenged. Look at that. You were stuck there. Huh? You want to? Yeah, say I'm bums. like, I'm like trying to say, say bums. bums. Okay, <laughs> listen, Bum listen. Island. We got. Uh, it's it's called Red Rock Island. It's in the San Francisco Bay. It's the only privately owned island. Twenty five million dollars. It's five and a half, five point eight acres of land. That's actually a, not that expensive no, for your own private island. No. Now, here's the problem, because that's what I thought. I'm like, San Francisco, you couldn't buy 5.8 acres anywhere in San Francisco for $25 million. It would be all, way more yeah, than yeah, that, yeah. right? The, 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 the problem is- it didn't get into it. Well, it belongs to like four different districts. There it is. Oh, and it's all- Look at the beach on it, though. Yeah, but there's no like flat area to build well, anything. You build. You could build you on that. Chop the top off. You could build on it. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, just chop the, <laughs> chop the top off right there. And then, uh, no. No. You so could actually buy that, huh? You could buy wow. it, but uh, there's you have to go through a bunch of- like you have to go through San Francisco and their regulations. Then there's like, let me see. Uh, any development would have to pass through three levels of bureaucracy. Uh, now we're now we're talking. Uh, yeah, go. that's why. Yeah. Four point one acres of the island is in Contra Costa County. Zero point zero nine acres is in Marin, and the remaining one and a half acres is in San Francisco. So dumb. So you got to go through all like, three had to get bro, approved to do anything. Yes. So one guy who owns it, his name is Brock Durning. Sounds like a guy who would own Brock an island, right? Durning. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brock. <laughs> He's been living in Alaska for decades, inherited the property from his father, and he wanted to make a desalinization plant, but he couldn't get through the regulations. Could not what figure out- What a waste. Out, what, what a waste. Terrible, right? Yeah. I know. Because how cool that would be yeah, to turn it into something. Make it so like a party people, destination. People have been like, let's build a desalinization plant so you get water, make it a solar panel system, and then the, the regulations are just so insane. It's too bad, right? Because it's sitting right off the coast, and I feel like you could do something awesome there. I mean, I mean it's a beautiful would, location. It would be amazing if you could actually build on the top of that right there and have a little helicopter pad and a little boat launch and 
I mean, I would do that. Hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you can't, that's stupid, though. What if they find like a hidden like a uh, you know area underneath it, Justin? Yeah. 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 Lizard it's people. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I know. It's, Speaking it's, of things, it's a good bunker destination for thinking me. Thinking of sp- things that look good, they just did a study and found that men who are considered handsome. Okay, so Adam. So I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's you too, Justin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. No, Adam's the designated guy. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, I don't know about that. Men who are considered handsome earn on average 20% more than the average man. <laughs> hmm. I mean, that's so taller too, right? Mm-hmm. Taller, good looking, like yeah. they're all those things are. I imagine I'm, it's similar with women. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't say it. Didn't say I mean, that. I know, I know it's a, this is always, a, I mean, I'm, anytime I bring this up, I get hate, but that it's. This always brings me to like the the privilege debate that everybody That's gets what into. They call it handsome privilege. Yeah, it's like <laughs> there's a lot of different privileges that are out there that like you know that we can't control, you know. Yeah. And so it's so funny how we like, we tend to isolate some and make them like everything. Well, right? so like in- the, the race one is like this massive thing, everything. or sex one is this massive thing. It's like. Dude, there's so many different things. And then that, mindset and experiences. And I mean, you can you can list an infinite number. Yeah. But, that, but what they said in the article too was, you know, why we tend to treat good looking people differently is because it is a strong sign of healthy genetics. This is why we consider some things attractive and other things not. It's an outward sign that you're healthy. Is you think it's more it, that? Or do you think that I an think attractive person presents like more confidence people look and at happier, happier people happier exactly. more than uh, ugly people? Well, I think it's both because first off, you present yourself as good looking. You're probably good looking as a kid growing up. So people treat you differently because the genes are signaling good health and you know whatever. But then also you get the feedback loop of people treating you better. So you have a different outlook on life and you have more confidence. So it's this positive feedback loop. So I've dated girls that this is a massive disadvantage too, though. What do you mean that they're that they're attractive? Yes, uh, because people that's all their value. Ha- yes, oh, have right. given them everything, and the, everything comes so easy that like they they've 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 had a hard time finding purpose or they don't actually get sticking quite as sticking to either. one thing yeah. for uh, you know for a long time. So any sort of loyalty to anything because there's always somebody else who's offering them a better opportunity or like that or trying to get their attention. I think good looks. Uh, may have more negative effects on women than men because uh, uh, appearance. Oh, interesting. Well, because appearance is more valued uh, by most people for women than for men. Like, if you're a good looking dude, but you're kind of a loser, you don't make any money or whatever, yeah. you're not going to get very far. Not very far. Yeah. And most women will rank things like sense of humor and status and work ethic and stuff like that much higher. Whereas appearance tends to rank much higher in women. So if you're a good looking girl, especially as a young girl, then you you get this feedback loop that that's what's important. That's the most important thing about you. And then as you age, you know that goes away for everybody. Yeah. So that's got to be a tough uh, situation. But I thought that was interesting. They called it handsome privilege. So, all right. What do we do with that? <laughs> yeah, what do we? Next do time that? you get an argument with someone good looking, oh, yeah. I don't know, dude. that's your privilege yeah. talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you give them a, a, a good and bad. Any trait you can you can spin it. I'm pretty sure at the same time. Yeah. So did you guys? I want to tell you guys about this influencer I just found and how much money they're making. And that's not the that's not going to be the weird part. It gets actually kind of weird. But I'm going to bring them up real quick, just to kind of show you. It was really interesting to me. When I read this, so there's an AI influencer oh, wow. who's now generating about eleven thousand dollars a month. Not a huge amount. We know influencers that make a lot more money than that, but yeah. you know, six figures off of a TikTok account, and it's AI generated. It's not real. Wow, it is not six wow. figures. It is not Man. real. Eleven thousand dollars a month. That's the ideal business. It is right a one hundred percent AI generated individual. Wow. It's How not long even a do real you guys person. think, okay, with this whole AI stuff, like we're going to be able to get away, like these people are going to be able to get away with that and make I, money off of it? I think it's a, I think it's a, sh- a small window. Yes. I think You're right. what I, what I, everybody what I yeah. brought up about that Sam Solik kid. Okay. So I, after I found out about that kid, I kind of dug through his stuff to get it. Like for, anytime I hear about someone exploding like that, I'm curious, right? What, what does this guy do? That's the girl right there. Oh, wow. Now, dude, that doesn't even look like AI. It doesn't. Wow. Crazy. It doesn't. Obviously, you're an attractive person, but I wouldn't think that it was AI. Wow. That looks real. Isn't that weird? The only thing that gives away it's not real is how good the photos yeah, all every look. picture is staged. Yeah, yeah, she looks super real, but every, every, uh, the, yeah, the scene, background, yeah, and the, they, they, now don't you think, though, the at way some they point, they shot it, it's, I yeah, like the comments. Don't you think fake. at some point, though, that they'll figure that out and then the AI so, okay. will make it more gritty? So, more. okay, yeah. So, 
I do think there's a small window where like th- like this fools enough people. There's also a percentage of people that probably don't care. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think it's really fooling. Yeah, there's a obviously a market. They, they make blow up dolls it. that people fuck. So there's obviously people oh, that don't care, right? <laughs> Sorry, Doug. It's true. So though. I mean, it's, it's a fact, Doug. I, I know it's a fact. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just the way you present it. So like, well, there, in your face. Is there a more elegant way to say that? Make love. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. <laughs> there's a group of people that make love to plastic dolls. There you go. Right? <laughs> much better, Adam. Much better. Okay, so I don't have time to be that political. I did not have sexual relations. My point is uh, bringing up that Sam Love Sola is guy. reciprocation. So as I, as I dove into his stuff to see kind of like what he's all about, cool guy, smart guy, yeah, yeah. super jacked. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and I heard Josh say it. Is, and it was exactly what I kind of thought was just raw and gritty. There seems to be this movement and uh, gravitation towards these influencers and people now that are more authentic and more real. Yeah. And so people appreciate the kind of, you know, grimy gym area and the the hoodie and like just not combed hair right, and right. the you know what I'm saying eating cereal in the morning just with the with your phone iPhone right. out like because it's novel e- yeah everything when everything's perfect then that's the right way. so not edited up not hype music yeah, behind right. it and just me talking to the camera and giving you tips and stuff that I've that's learned so I'm funny a- I feel like simultaneously both are going to be very popular uh, like you have like your super scrubbed, like AI out version. Cause I'm just thinking too, in music, that's the already happening. The same thing. Sure. And I'm very much drawn to the garage band style. Like the, you have to go see them live because it's just not even the same thing. Here, otherwise here, besides live, cause live's gonna be very hard at, you know, at, show, at some point, maybe AI will be able to do that. But the, the challenge is that AI will be able to copy you know, gritty. They'll be able to call on picture, at least picture and video. So at some point people using AI to create yeah, these things, well, not I mean, yet, the market's so. going to go in this direction. Okay. We'll make a, yeah. somebody who looks like they're talking to the phone or he's got no, acne right. or. So but there, there will also become a tool though, that you'll be able to bolt on to your the software that you'll be able to bolt on. I, that will t- tell you. I, I agree. I think we're going to have AI so you'll, you'll detect know. AI. Yes. hundred percent. hundred percent. I mean, I, and we, that's cool. I mean, you said it kind of tongue in cheek, but we really took action and did it. I mean, anybody that's ever seen our podcast logo, it says hundred percent human grade. Now Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do think you're right on that point that it's going to go. Everyone's that gonna want organic. Uh, people content. are going to want to know. Yeah. And, and by the way, there'll be a, to Justin's point, There'll, there'll be a portion of people because here's what's the thing that will be valuable of AI is it will be next to free yeah, because it's not taking up any real person's yep. time. So they'll be able to, they'll be able to give away good free stuff. You won't even need cameras. It's, right. So yeah. there, there will challenge you either. It's like all bubble gum. Well like that, scrubbed. so there'll be a, but there'll be a divide in the, in the population of people that they don't care that yeah. it's fake AI because they're yeah. getting what they want from it and fed. it's free. Then there'll be other people that are like, I'm willing to pay and spend money for less perfect because I know it's real. And I want that. I want as close to a human connection as I can have, even though I know it's a virtual world we're doing this in. At least I feel Did that you, it's this authentic person. You guys watch. And maybe one day I'll meet them. Now you guys watch yeah. the movie Ex Machina. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought movie. one of the more brilliant, one of the best sci-fi movie. movies ever made. Very, yeah. very One of the more brilliant things about it was this machine. Eventually, uh, spoiler alert you know, ends up, you know, killing everybody. But the, the 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 machine itself learned what this particular interviewer liked based off of all of his internet searches. So it literally became yeah. so alluring and so convincing to him because it, it could manipulate him so effectively because it knew what he liked. At some point, if AI can connect to your Apple Watch, your computer's camera, read your pupil dilation, your heart rate, your cortisol levels... It could literally, in real time, change and mold itself to hit all those buttons. It'll be almost impossible have, not to get fooled. Have you guys seen, and this is just a, on the thread of technology, but I watched a commercial where um, they're promoting this product that was basically like kind of like a Google search or like something like you'd use to search things on your phone or whatever, but it, it would shoot like a projection onto your hand. And so it was like a little clip, like you, you attach it to your body and then you kind of audibly talk to it. But then like when you need to look up something, it's like, boom, I'm looking and it's shooting it on my hand. Wow. And then like they're going on with their day. It, it seemed to me like it was trying to promote um, like a different way to interact with technology instead of our phones, trying to like one step with trying to kind of get us out of like, you know, this, 
uh, manual sort of like I'm always on my phone looking down mm. and my posture shitty. So I thought it was interesting. I don't know what the product's called, but it's definitely out there. Yeah, I don't know what the waves. evolution of that looks like, right? Because that that's also, I think, going to come to a halt at one point where we recognize uh, what that's doing to all of us. I mean, it's crazy to me. Like, you guys have seen, have you seen some like these kids that are like, 18, 19 yeah. years old, and they grew they, like they grew up on the iPhone yep. from the beginning, and they're like their posture is they're like shrimps now. Yeah. yeah, they're completely rounded forward. You're not and, even talking and, about their brain, their attention. You're just talking about their body. Yeah, I know. And I know. so you know, there's a lot of this stuff that's that, that's unfolding now, and it takes a while yeah. for us to figure this out. Speaking of, of which, a big mask. I got to read this to you guys about things that took a little while. Now we have the data, even though a lot of us knew this already. We have data now. Did you guys see the? There was a um, a analysis on studies on masks, a systematic review on children. So during COVID, first of all, the study showed that it didn't prevent, really didn't prevent any transmission. But here's what it did find. An extensive body of research has found harms associated with mask wearing in children. These associated harms include negative impacts on speech, language, and learning. Mm. Mask wearing caused reduced word identification and impedes the ability to teach and evaluate Speech. It also may impact mental health and social emotional well being by limiting the ability to accurately interpret emotions, particularly in young younger children. There's also evidence that masks hinder social emotional learning and language literacy development in young children. Children with special needs and autism may be disproportionately impacted by mask uh, requirements. Like the brain, we are so tuned to reading faces and little minor adjustments to your emotions and, and your whatever. That making kids wear that, we sacrificed a lot. Dude, it's like everybody knew that. It's just like we just decided to discard that yeah. thought and and just run the experiment. Yeah, it's just frustrating because it's like you know, you're not you're not going to be able to convince anybody that still has issues with that. Is it's their pacifier? It's mm. the way that they're consult you know well, consoling I still, themselves. There's still a large. I mean, I saw it in our forum. People were discussing some things that they uh, they like or not like about us or agree or disagree. Someone with us. said the mask. Well, they brought up that we thought that like, that, like when you bring up like that we handled COVID the wrong way, there's still people that believe that that was the best way to handle that. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. In our community. How can you look back? It's like not, you, I would love to have debate and discussion and discord, really, but it's they like they really don't walk people right still out. really wanna, think that, believe it. you know, had we not, it would have been 10x worse. And they thought the that data. The data is clear. Mountains of evidence. But now the data is clear. Though. There's not even it. speculation. It's all yeah. pretty damn it's clear. Mountains us of evidence. That read all of it, but not everybody <laughs> yeah. reads. There's all a term of it. for that. It's, it's called cognitive dissonance. It's a very, very difficult. Yeah. Well, thing. I'm telling you right now, it's 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 Stockholm prevalent. Syndrome. It's prevalent enough to be in our community who listen who actually listen to us daily. So imagine how how many more people are out there that actually still think that way. Right. That still think know, that it was it was the right sacrifice, even with what you're bringing up, that still doesn't matter to them. Yes, there's a percentage of people now, and I've seen it. I've seen that also on our, our channel of people that came out and said, like, I was wrong. You know, yeah. I thought, you know, so there we do have some people with that awareness, right? Self-awareness that have admitted that, oh man, I thought we did it the right way, and now I see it wasn't. But then there's still a lot of people, and I know a lot of people that think that that was, and it would have been Crazy. way worse had we not. Crazy. All right, you know, uh, I had mentioned earlier, Yikes. like, good looks and this and that. And I talked about, and then we talked about AI, and I said acne, like, uh, you know, AI might make people have acne to make them look real or whatever. You know, I read a, a study on red light therapy and acne. Oh, yeah? It is an effective acne treatment. So you could use, if you have acne. What that, is it doing that? regenerate the skin changes the microbiome on the skin uh um, oh, so it's it's changing the microbiome on the skin that's some of the speculation but it has been shown in studies to improve not just acne but the acne scars that are left from really bad cystic acne huh. so what connection so, does does acne have with like your mitochondria health is it is that a sign of poor mitochondria health or is it like what's i, I think having because uh, that's really what that's doing it's having charging that better more skin that regenerates faster and uh and I guess faster and healthier and is less likely to have problematic cells. Yes. And is less likely to have acne. That's interesting. A, but, but the studies do show, especially with the scarring caused by acne. So you see, you know, you've run into adults, right? Where you could tell they had really bad acne when they mm -hmm. were kids. Um, but it's, a, it's an acne treatment. So especially for body acne, that's the other one. If you have acne on your back or your body. Well, I know stretch marks, it definitely made yeah. a, a, a real big impact. And, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to multiple people that have had experiences without using the red lights really helped with that. So yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's pretty cool. 
That is cool. Because I know, I didn't look, know that. I mean, I know I, I didn't really deal with this as a kid, but I know I know adults who still I mean struggle. It's really tough to you know to struggle with that. But I don't know any of them that have tried red light. I had no idea until I pulled up the studies. Yeah, on I it. want mine back. I've got it here at the <laughs> studio. But I see the guys are using it like uh, there, and so I feel bad. Tyler uses it all the time. Yeah, he was oh. yeah, this morning. He, he was in on it again. So I feel bad about taking it because yeah. they're actually using it. But yeah. I miss having it at my house right now. Hey, I wanted to close off with telling you Arnold's uh, PRs. You guys know what his PRs were in, his, in, the, in the biggest lifts? Did you guys know that like he- in Like in the golden era? Yeah, when, when he was lifting. Let's take a guess. Yeah, let's take a guess at all this. Yeah, I'm going to guess his, his squat at- uh, 575. I'm going to guess his bench at 400. Four, I'm going to bet in, in 405, 425. Deadlift at 600. Okay. How close am I? His back squat? Yeah. What did you say it was? 575. What did you say? Uh, Yeah, I'll say 515. 525. Ooh. Okay. So back squat, 525. His, uh, oh, wait a minute. That can't be right. Oh, okay, here we go. His bench press, what Four, was his highest bench press? 405. Yeah. 525. Four, Sorry, oh. his best squat was 610. Sorry, I got that reversed. Uh, best bench oh. press was 525. Okay. Squat was 610. What was his best deadlift? Well, I said 600, but it's probably higher than yeah, seven, 710. 10, yeah. Damn, he, he pays, Not bad. That's really Not good. bad at all, yeah. man. That's pretty damn good. You know He's who was- beast. You know who was mace, way stronger than him? Colombo. Franco Colombo. Yeah, yeah. Little ass Franco. I mean, wow. isn't that how they became buddies, yeah, right? Yeah. Like he was smaller, but he was stronger than he yeah, was in a lot dude. of stuff, right? Yeah. But I mean, that's pretty damn good. But what's interesting is that you see guys like a 525 back squat's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, there's, there's, I, I've known guys to be able to squat that much. Um, the bench press, 525. I don't know very many people that could do that. He was obviously very strong on the bench press. What about the Hulk? I forget his name. Like, Lou Ferrigno? Lou Ferrigno, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what is. Okay, what is I felt like it? he was stronger than him, but like you know, it was no. I don't think he was. No, he no, was, I don't think he was. That, no, that just goes to show you how strong Ronnie Coleman was. Yeah, oh, yeah Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman, Coleman is, a, is ridiculous. A, made no sense yeah. how strong. Remember that video of him doing the two hundred pound uh, dumbbell chest presses? Well, he used 12s? to he used to row like five plates, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, bent over a row. Like, that's, he did some crazy, yeah, yeah, crazy, and he'd be. I remember that video of him leading up to Showtime. Like he was like a week out from getting on stage and doing seven hundred and something pounds, eight hundred pound deadlift. Yeah, where he was. Yeah, he was. Uh, he said that's the one. I think it was an eight hundred pound squat. He said that's the one that he thinks caused all the back damage. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, crazy. So Justin, you said something today. So I, I was shout out. I'm gonna give a different, a different type of a shout out. Um, you were talking about music, and okay. I found this artist. I think I shared the artist with you that I've been listening to like crazy. And I was like, oh, you know what? I should share that on the podcast. His name is Steven Rodriguez. What would you consider his his music? What would you say it's like? I share with you like- uh, Oh, you shared that bluesy, guy that's jazzy, kind of Bluesy, jazzy, like raw. Like what would you say? I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, somewhere how. in between all that, a little bit of a country kind of vibe. But yeah, no, I think it's more just new wave blues. Like uh, uh, because too, I showed you uh, a few other kind of artist examples of that. Like yeah. uh, Rain Wolf was another one that I love. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, he's rad. He's a, he's a great artist. Yeah, he's got like a raspy. I, I sent over I sent over to Jessica. I don't know if you ever heard it. When mm -hmm. I sent it over, mm -hmm. I would send some stuff to her. I know she liked it. She sent it back. But Steven Rodriguez. So check that out. It's not like a follow on Instagram. It's a check out on Spotify. And um, I've, I've probably got like eight of his songs downloaded. I like it so much. Organifi is a company that makes supplements, they're organic, that help you with well, wellness, health, and performance. They have a new product. In fact, uh, I love it. Uh, it's called Organifi's Shilajit Gummies. This has real Shilajit inside them, but they taste delicious. Lots of health benefits from boosting testosterone, balancing hormones, reducing inflammation, and helping with cognitive performance. They have lots of other products as well. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O R. G A N I F I dot com forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Colin from Tennessee. Colin, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Good uh, see you again. Real quick, Adam, I took care of your IOU and went ahead and bought a grip strength. So good stuff. <laughs> no worries on that. Good stuff. <laughs> right on. Uh, so, um, just diving into the question. So, uh, alternating workout or phases every workout versus doing a phase of training you know every three to four weeks and so i'll use an example with a client that i had um she worked out like every day for something like 20 or 30 years and she loved it that was her thing to do she came from the 
time when, you know, 15 to 25 reps was all you were supposed to do as a woman. And so she did that literally every day for something like 20 or 30 years. And she got to the place where her mobility was so bad and she had so much joint pain. She stopped for something like five or 10 years. So this is where she meets me and we start working together and, you know, mobility and all those things. And luckily I'd listened to mind pump for a very long time. So I knew what I was doing going into it. Um, and so we got her to where she was kind of pain-free and feeling good. But what I noticed was, is when we transitioned to like a, a lighter version of MAPS anabolic, right? So I never had her go. She was probably 62 when we met. Um, I never had her go to like four reps. Like it was never that heavy. I think six or eight was the heaviest or the lowest we would go. But what I noticed was, is if I did more than, especially like two weeks in one phase, she would get really, really tight, really stiff and had a hard time recovering. And that was almost any phase. So what I ended up doing, um, cause I, what my concern for her was that if she regressed back to having a ton of like mobility issues, she was going to quit and never work out again. Like, like she did, you know, before. So what I did just through trial and error is on Mondays, it was heavier, like eight repetitions was the max we would do. And we would go as heavy as she could for eight. And then on Wednesday, we would do more like hypertrophy, like 12 repetitions. And then on Friday, we would do 15 you know, to 20 repetitions. And then we cycled that way. And she seemed to respond really, really well as just from the psychological side. So my question is, is that okay? Would you have done it differently? Would you recommend a different way of doing that? Of course um, it's okay. Or or what is it? Of course it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, of course. If she got yeah. if she felt good doing it, you did the right thing. Yeah. So and this is, you know, for anybody watching as a trainer or coach, I mean, you have to you know, there's general guidelines, but you have to you individualize it. You gotta follow the individual. I mean, I, I would have done it if, if I were to do anything any differently, it would have looked more like a strength training workout, yeah, a mobility uh, day. A mobility workout yeah. and maybe isometrics. So rather mm -hmm. than just phase the reps and the weight. Um, it would be the intention as well. Um, and this is how I used to train my older clients. We would do a, if I trained somebody more than once a week, uh, there would be strength <clears throat> training and then there'd be mobility and then there'd be some other kind of maybe isometric or some kind of balance type of workout. And it just seemed to work, mm -hmm. work best with them. And most people over the age of 65, I actually had them strength train twice a week. I had very few that would do any kind of strength training more than that. And if I did, like I said, I would throw in the mobility or stability or balance or, or isometrics. But if, if you did it and it worked, then it was good. <clears throat> well, not to mention the studies are pretty clear too, that it's, they're pretty equal, right? Somebody who is changing every workout versus somebody who keeps it the same for six weeks or whatever like that. I mean, it's not going to make that big of a difference as far as their results are concerned. And if she's doing better that way as a coach and as a trainer, it's a no brainer. We tend to, to advocate for the phases for most people, and we've talked about this before, is because if you are constantly changing every single workout, it's really tough to see what's working well for you. And so it's like, oh, was it that the eight rep day that I did? Or was it, oh, the, the day on Friday where we did more of the, you know, supersetting that did it for me? Like people have a hard time being aware of what's going on in their workouts as it is. Changing it up every single day just makes it that much more difficult. But as a coach, if you have a, a specific situation like the one you just talked about, uh, you you doing a different workout every every time is not that big of a deal, especially if they're seeing results and they're in like it. Yeah, the other thing too is the um, you know you're training somebody's mindset and understanding as much as you're training their body. <clears throat> so staying in the same phase for let's say two to four weeks allows the person to really conceptualize and identify with the mindset that each phase style training requires. So heavy lifting, you know, you're not trying to feel the muscle. You're trying to perfect the movement. You're trying to stay tight. You're trying to maximize CNS um, recruitment or activation, you know, with the higher reps, like let's feel the muscle. Let's get the pump. Let's see what's happening here with mobility. It's more about challenging ranges of motion with control. So, so that's another, you know, value, but if someone's with you, okay, and you're coaching them, the advantage that they have is that you can help within that session, help them identify what to look for and what to feel. But, you know, the average person buys one of our programs. They don't have us there to train them. And so what ends up happening when they go a phase one, two, and three work on the same week all the time, especially if they're not super um, experienced, 
is they they're the they are not able to train the mindset and the understanding because you know as well as any other coach or trainer the way you approach mm -hmm. and the way that a heavy squat feels versus a lighter squat feels and how you approach it is it completely different <clears throat> it is not the same uh, the extremes would be like a bodybuilder versus a power lifter you are they're looking and trying to feel something completely different and so you you know to stay in that phase for a while allows you to really identify and feel and connect to that particular mindset because that's just as important as training the body. But again, your client has you to be able to do that for her. So now you did the right thing. Okay. So then on that note, you know, you said like mobility day, something I did was always adamant about, especially if she came in and wasn't feeling her best. We always did 20 minutes of prime priming before every session. That was always the standard. If after priming, she didn't feel well enough to do strength training, Mm -hmm. The whole session would be priming, right? Prime or prime pro, mm -hmm. one of those two. And so that's kind of typically how I would structure it. And then to what Adam said about, you know, gauging, that was what bothered me was I couldn't gauge week over week mm -hmm. how she was progressing in her like lifts necessarily, like, like we would traditionally if we were doing three or four weeks in, in the, you know, in strength or in hypertrophy or in, in endurance. But what I did do is she followed a very similar, like maybe again, like a lighter version of anabolic where the workouts were the same. I was tracking them. So like if every Monday was a strength workout or every Wednesday was a hypertrophy workout, I was looking at the previous one so that she could know like, Hey, this is the numbers we're looking at. And, you know, we're seeing if you're progressing in weight or if we're more so progressing in your ability to do the movement well without pain, range of motion and things like that. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. To take it a step further, I, I still do think priming's great. You should probably prime before every workout regardless to some extent, but I do think it's a spe it's it's important long term to dedicate uh, one of the workouts, especially when someone is reaching you know the age of let's say uh, you know, fifty five or older, or somebody younger who's had previous issues. Just regardless of how they feel, we are going to do a mobility workout. Today's workout is entirely um, mobility based and range of motion based and connection connecting, and we're going to try to do some dynamic stuff. And, you know, I think it's, it's going to be regardless, regardless of how the person feels, because what you don't want to do is get behind the eight ball. I think a lot of times as coaches and trainers, we wait until somebody says something hurts, but by the time something hurts, you're already, you're already beyond when you could have, um, had an intervention that would have prevented that. Now you're playing catch up. So, uh, I still think it's important that there's a day where it's just no matter what, I don't care. Okay. You feel great. That's great. Today's mobility. Okay. Well then follow up question to that, if that's okay. Sure. So for some of my older clients now, I have them follow maybe a similar model to like maps 15, mm -hmm. especially the ones who want to work. They like, we, they love working out. They've done it for a long time, but you know, an hour every day is just way too much. So they're doing kind of that 15, 20 minutes a day. <laughs> Would you still turn like maybe one of those into just mobility or since it's only two or three exercises that they're doing, you know, not as big of a deal for them to uh, replace all the exercises. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And mobility workouts can be longer than, <clears throat> than the allocated 20 minutes because the intensity and the load and the volume aren't, aren't anywhere near the same, but hundred percent. Yeah. And that'll vary based off of like, if there's anything that needs correction, right. If there's any pain and restriction and, you know, in terms of like frequency and volume with that, that's where you can kind of program and play with that. Uh, to address very specific things, but uh, overall in general, like just having one day devoted to that is just good, um, you know, constant sort of upkeep and, and uh, making sure you're reinforcing these joints and the function and everything else. So that way you don't get into like problems down the road. Yeah. So then last question in regards to, to this topic for a client who comes in and I recognize that this is what they need as the coach. I know that this comes down to just effectively communicating to them. But when they're, they get a few weeks into it and they're like, well, why am I not seeing progress? Right. But we've had, we've had to like, maybe like what you said, right. We're, you know, we're changing the workouts based off what they need. We're doing a lot of mobility and stuff. How would you communicate that? Or how do you recommend communicating like, Hey, progress isn't going to be like what it would normally would be, you know, if you were 20 or 30 years old, right. You're 60 or 70. Wrong, and, wrong argument. You know, how would you communicate that? Wrong argument. Yeah. You're saying it the wrong way. If somebody says to you, why am I not progressing? The last thing you want to do is say, it's because you're not young or, um, you know, here's the deal. Are they really not progressing, Colin? Yeah. Are, are there, what are, are those other metrics you can are there, pull? Are there any improvements anywhere that you're noticing within that period of time? 
Sh- sure. Yeah. No, like, I guess I would see the progress and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, Hey, it's cause you're not 20 years younger. It's yeah. more so them telling me, Hey, 20 years ago, I would have been able to do this and see progress faster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about that, Mrs. Johnson, but you know, here's the things that we have noticed. You did say you're sleeping better mm-hmm. and you don't have as much back pain or, you know, well, here's what yeah, I did notice. Energy you're levels are higher. Yeah. You're squatting deeper than you did uh, before. And it looks like you're not getting as sore. Like, you know, have you noticed that? Like, your, your, your job is going to be to help her broaden her focus on the values, uh, that you're providing her with your, uh, with your service. It is not to argue the point that she's making and to keep her focus or his focus on that one narrow scope. Cause you will lose that battle. I promise you. Then it'll become a battle of, you know, well, this or that and, uh, okay. Patience, but how long? And I'm frustrated. And, Ooh, there's this other trainer over there that seems to be getting people really sweaty. I think I'm going to go over there. Yeah. That makes sense. And that goes in line with what you guys said the other day about uh, setting the expectations right up front in the That's initial right. session of like, hey, this is what we expect to see. And this is the process. And, you know, we'll hit these humps and we're going to get through it. And this is, you know, the journey, what the journey will look like. Yeah. imagine so That makes sense. Imagine if you went on a bus ride and the bus driver never told you that he's going to be driving over gravel and bumps and it's going to be crazy storms. And then you encounter those, you're going to be freaking out. But what if he told you ahead of time? Hey, look at mile five. We're gonna be hitting some big bumps. It's all good. I drive over them all the time. Okay, so it's not a problem anymore. You have to set the expectation. You have to make the prediction predictions. All that does is build trust. Yeah, awesome. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. You got it, man. All Thanks. Right, good to see you again, brother. Take it easy. Yeah, that's uh, you know, I, I, okay for the coach listening. <clears throat> It is your job to broaden the scope of what the person pays attention to and notices because people will only pay attention to the scale and the mirror and maybe the weight on the bar. That's it. They won't notice anything else unless you help reveal it to them. And then they, to the individual who's not a trainer or coach, pay attention to everything because you'll only see what you're looking at. And if all you're doing is looking at the scale, you'll, you'll, you won't notice all the other amazing things like that Bruce Lee quote where, you know, he points off to the moon and he says, stop looking at the finger pointing to the moon, or you're going to miss all that heavenly glory. You have to, you have to identify all of the benefits that your workout and diet are providing you. Otherwise you will lose motivation. It will feel like it's a waste of time and you Mm -hmm. will seek out other methods that are inappropriate and that are going to get you not only nowhere, but get you to go backwards. Yeah. We, uh, he was alluding to something we talked about in person, right? So he just left our studio last week. And one of the things that we talked about was the importance of forecasting with your, your clients. I think trainers uh, fail at this a lot. Totally. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they, they allow the client to come in and say, Hey, I want to lose 30 pounds or, Hey, I want to get ready for this wedding. And then like, okay, we sign them up and it's like on, on to the goal versus you telling them what this journey is going to look like and all the things that we're going to be looking for other than just getting you in that dress or other than just, losing that 30 pounds because it's, it's important if this is going to be a client that's going to stick with you, that they understand there's going to be these peaks and valleys and there's other metrics besides just putting weight on the bar or just losing weight on the scale. And you need to help them understand that if you're going to have these clients for a long time. Our next caller is Austin from Kansas. What up Austin? Austin, what's happening? Hey guys. Uh, it's kind of crazy <laughs> talking to you. Um, First off, thanks for everything you guys do. I love the content, especially the dad stuff. I got two young kids at home. So right um, yeah, cool. I just appreciate Good for podcast you. And everything you guys put out. Good for you, man. Um, so my question is, um, just read off my email. Um, seem to be struggling with what I think is some hypoglycemia or low blood sugar uh, during or after my early morning workouts. I'm um, usually 530 in the morning or so. Um, usually happens and, uh, when I go to like a moderate intensity or, you know, a longer duration, um, and just get lightheaded and everything and, I uh, feel like I'm nauseous. And, um, so I have to drink juice or something, to get, feel better. Um, question is what should I eat or drink before my workouts to avoid feeling that way, uh, to feel my body, my workouts. And could what I eat the night before, the day before, be making a difference? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, gummy bears are, no, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> what you eat the day before can make a difference. But we got to, first off, we have to make sure that that's what you're actually feeling. Because sometimes it's not, oftentimes it's not some form of hypoglycemia. Have you been diagnosed with hypoglycemia or have you ever had your blood sugar levels tested? Yeah, I, I've had them tested. Um, no issues and never, no, no diabetes or anything like that in my family. 
Okay. And uh, have you had a nutrient level test? Um, and are you, do you know if you're having enough sodium in your diet? Because both of which can cause some of these interesting um, symptoms. By the way, the symptoms of hypoglycemia can feel like lightheadedness, nausea, cold sweat. Um, is, it, is it all that? Stomach ache. Yeah. 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 It's basically like, I'm, you know, I feel like I might pass out or something. Um, yeah. All, all of the above. Okay. And, and uh, do you know how many calories you're eating a day and are you getting good sleep? You said you have two kids. So. Yeah. I mean, sleep is probably about, about seven, seven and a half hours a night, roughly. Okay. Um, and then calories. I, I've never, I haven't done any, you know, real close tracking or anything like that. I'd say I'm probably like 2000 or, you know, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. Not could be a stress response from the exercise, but I would get your nutrient levels tested just to make sure that there's nothing. What kind of workout are we doing? That's nothing off. Yeah. What does a workout look like? Good question, Adam. Yeah. So, um, after finding you guys a couple years ago, I started doing, uh, maps anabolic. Um, mm -hmm. and basically I've kind of like adapted it to my own, just sort of, um, you know, still doing like deadlifts and squats and all the, all this full body workouts two times a week, sometimes three times a week but I'm not doing the trigger sessions anymore. Do you have um, caffeine before your workout? No, I, I don't take pre-workouts. Um, I usually just drink, drink a big glass of water or something while before I go and then drinking water while I'm there. <laughs> I mean, have you, have you ever noticed like uh like on a night, maybe when you like, you had like a huge dinner or something different, have, have you started to connect the dots? Like your performance is different or you feel different? Like, cause it could be as simple as that as you're just kind of low calorie, low energy, and you're fasted going into these workouts and you just need some calories. Have you, have you noticed anything? Have you paid attention to that? So probably like a week leading up before I wrote the question. And since I, you know, a couple of weeks of like, since I wrote the question in, I've tried to really dial in on that and I haven't had it happen to me since. Hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, this has happened to me a handful of times throughout the year. Um, I don't, I say I'm not gluten-free. I don't eat low carb normally. Um, but, uh, I guess like, I know last night I had a big plate of spaghetti, um, worked out and I was fine this morning. So, okay. um, you know, I think it, it, that could be it. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, definitely could be it. Cause when I go really low, when I would used to go low calorie at times for particular reasons, sometimes that would happen to me as well. And when I bumped my calories up, I, I didn't notice it as much. You can also try sodium. So with your glass of water in the morning, you know, we work with element, uh, element T. You could try some sodium beforehand. It's got a little bit of magnesium, potassium. See if that makes a difference. If it is indeed a hypoglycemic issue, it could be as simple as having a tablespoon of honey or a piece of fruit. Nothing to fill you up, but, you know, 15 to 20 minutes before you work out. And that could very well uh, make the difference. And you might even throw a little bit of fat on it. So I used to have a client that this would happen to, and they, they legit were, were hypoglycemic. I mean, we did all the testing and we saw, okay, this is what the deal is. And so she would eat a banana with some peanut butter. And, uh, that seemed to, to solve, uh, the issue for her. So those are the things that I would, I would have you look at, but I do think you should have your nutrient levels tested. Make sure you're not low in any key nutrients just to kind of rule that out. Otherwise you'll, you know, you're going to be doing the wrong thing and, and maybe you won't get the hypoglycemic issue feeling I should say, but you still have a nutrient deficiency, which may cause other things. Do you notice any, any like ener energy issues otherwise, any issues with uh, like sleep disturbances or libido or anything, in, anything that would uh, identify or point to some kind of a nutrient uh, deficiency? Uh, no, no, not you, not that I can think of. Okay. Um, so usually after the workout, after I get that juice, I'm feeling pretty good throughout the rest of the day. And then, you know, on those days, if I work out and I don't have that issue during the workout, I feel fine the rest of the day too, as well. And usually I don't wake up in the middle of the night, um, with sleep. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. But by, by the way, there's nothing wrong with drinking juice while you work out. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait till you're done. There's nothing wrong with, you know, sipping on that, uh, throughout the workout. I have had clients like that where that's, that's what we would do. And it would, uh, help, uh, with that particular issue. What about eating like creatures of habit before you start? Yeah. yeah. That's like another oatmeal, one. like something light like <clears throat> that. Have you tried eating something light like that? Like creatures of habit, like an oatmeal type of a, a breakfast before you go with you know, slam it pretty easy. No, I haven't. Um, I say typically it's like I wake up and then I roll out of bed, get dressed and, you know, 
head straight to the gym. I'm there within 15 minutes of waking up usually. Yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. I, I could try, I could try definitely eating, you know, Bam, with peanut butter sounds good. I mean, it's worth it's worth it just to test some of this stuff. I mean, here's the thing too. Yeah. Like we've talked about this before when we talked to people about fasted state working out a long time ago when we first started uh, talking about it. Um, Sal would talk about how uh, how much he feels better. He feels better in a fasted state right. uh, when he lifts. And I would just and I was like, man, I just don't. I just, I just I don't have the gas. I gas out within 30 minutes of doing it. In fact, I've found that. I do best. My best workouts are after two meals. I, I can't just have one meal before a lift. Two meals I need to really load up on some carbohydrates to have. It doesn't mean I'm I can't do the workout, or I'm, it just means I just don't feel my best. And some people are like that. You may feel that you need you just higher ca- carbs, higher calorie before you go into a, a workout like that. And so I, that's what I would do if I, I just test it and see what happens when. You either load up on a good high calorie, high carb dinner, and or have like a you know creatures of habit breakfast or a shake or smoothie before or sip on something. All those things are going to help fuel the body. And if you start to notice, man, when I do that, I have good workouts and I'm fine. And then when I don't, I notice a difference. Then that's just I mean you're you're learning about your body. Do you notice a difference uh, first thing in the morning when you get up? Uh, like you're going to the gym, but you're like, oh, okay, I know it's going to be one of those days where I'm going to be depleted uh, by the time I'm done. Or is this something that you don't even really realize till you start working out? Yeah, it's usually the latter. Yeah, so yeah. just you know when I get into it, you know, probably about twenty minutes in, you know, I start kind of feeling just weak. Yeah. So um, bringing some food with you at that point, I think, would make yeah. sense. Yeah, I mean, just based off what you're saying, like I said, I don't know if you have any nutrient deficiencies. We don't know what your blood pressure normally is at. Is that, by the way, is that high or low blood pressure? Do you have normal blood pressure? Normal, normal blood pressure. Okay. Um, all that's good. Look, based off of all the stuff that you're saying, my guess is that you probably would do well by eating something like I said, a banana with some peanut butter or drinking some juice during your workout and uh, having a nice dinner beforehand. And that should, the fact that you're, you've already noticed uh, an improvement because you've had a good dinner beforehand, uh, that, yeah. that kind of points in the direction that I, that I think just we're, keep playing around with it. That's you're it. Find the right combo. That's right. Okay, cool. All right. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. You got it, man. Right, man. Take it easy, brother. All right. You know, when you we're look like you needed some juice right now. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we're when we're when we're doing that, when we're like investigating and we're asking questions, I always want to fuck with someone like that. It's like, <laughs> do, you, do you get weird feelings when you see men in speedos or anything yeah. like that? <laughs> it's because we're like we're all firing like inquiring. Do you get rashes like, like it, a very specific yeah, place yeah, in your body. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I eating, just want to yeah. do it one of these times when, when we're you, doing when that. Next when, time we're gonna do when it. When you go yeah. number two, do you wipe front to back? <laughs> yes, front, yeah. Like so sideways. Off the wall. Double ply or just single ply? Is it? Yeah, that's really just a bad. bunch yeah, of different yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had so look. Okay, this is I've, this this has happened with clients that I've trained, and once you narrow it down, because it could be all the other things that I said. And so, so here's what you, what you don't want to do. I'll never forget. I had somebody crash out in a gym that I managed where they passed out, and oh, yeah. we had to call an ambulance. Yeah, I've had the same thing. And yeah. I ran to go get candy to give them. Okay, because yeah. I thought it was low blood sugar. Yeah, yeah. And the paramedics tested them, and it was high blood sugar, so uh, high the person yeah. lost consciousness. Wow. And the paramedic told me, had you given this person candy, you could have very well caused oh, some serious damage. My God. So that, and I was a young, you know, at the time, young manager. And I realized you got to test. You can't just guess because yeah, yeah. you could totally do the opposite. Uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, and, and it, here, there's this weird thing that happened when you get really stressed with your workout or stressed in life, it can cause your liver to also dump a bunch of sugar in your bloodstream. So I had a guy who was pre-diabetic and we would work out and his blood, and no, he had no food or nothing. He'd work out and his blood sugar would be higher at the end. He's like, I don't understand. I thought my blood sugar was supposed to go down. It's because the workout was a little too intense and his liver just dumped all this blood sugar and he would measure high blood sugar. So it's a lot more complicated than, oh, it must be, you know, yeah. hypoglycemia, you know, type of deal. The best but, person that's going to know is the person. That's right. Yeah. Our next caller is Jim from Georgia. Jim, what what's up, happening, Jim? man? By the way, that's the hey. most perfect beard i've ever seen that is a good life. beard i feel like it's like, <laughs> hey, jim how'd you do that we got you using caldera yet or no uh no not yet oh it's bro oh, we got to okay. get you on that it'll caldera. look even more perfect that's right all right what's going on man <laughs> how can we help you oh uh, well uh first of all i want to say um i appreciate the the work you guys do and um i'm so glad i found this podcast um i've been listening to you guys since august and uh before that it was just like whatever random youtube i would find 
uh, it was like, uh, you want bigger arms? I'm like, sure, I want bigger arms. And you, know, you watch the video. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you spend eight minutes watching that. And then the next video plays and the guy's like, you want bigger arms? Don't do this. And it's pretty much everything the guy before just said to do. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. So, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, you know, you get a, a pre-recorded message from Mike minster and he sounds like orson wells from war of the world or yeah. something and he basically <laughs> tells you that everybody's full of crap so you guys are great uh all, right. all the content is like so easy to find it's all in one place and uh i love it love it thank you thank you man. cool what you got for us so um basically um um uh, I've, I've worked out worked out on and off from um, you know since i was like early teens um never never missed a chance to skip leg day and uh just uh i i had an incident when i first got my uh first weight set when i was 14 and uh you know the old concrete weights coated in the little plastic stuff that you get from like the oh, outlet store yeah. oh yeah and uh first thing i wanted to do was see how much i could squat uh <laughs> put the weight on the bar put it on my back yeah. and hit the ground and, uh, you know, had something fall off, hit me in the head. So didn't really do squats anymore. So, um, um, uh, mainly focused on leg presses and stuff, you know, when I had a gym membership or leg extensions. So, um, I got maps anabolic and like, you know, you're forced to do squats. It's the first thing you got to do. So I did the pre-phase, um, you know, lightweight because, you know, it, it suggests you do like 12 to tw uh, 16 reps. So I did like 95 pounds, um, did pretty good and slowly increased that to about, um, 115 over that three week period, got into phase one, did box squats, 135. And you know, I said, Hey, this is safe. I got a seat, you know, something bad happened. I'm good. So I did 10 reps of that. Good. So I was like, well, I only got to do four reps. So I threw on about 155, one, you know, I threw on 185 and like instantly got that, um, that, uh, mental thing where it's like, oh my God, I can't, uh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get this up. So I started wobbling a little bit, almost fell forward, had to drop the weight a little bit. I don't know if I overdid it or if I wasn't properly engaged in my core or, or what, but it's when I get deep and then start to start my ascent, uh, I get kind of shaky and I get nervous about, uh, you know, coming up with the weight. So basically my question was, um, are there other exercises I can do, which will translate into being able to, squat more because i can bench more than i can squat pretty much yeah let me, okay so let me rephrase your question yeah. that's ptsd okay. by I think, the way. practice my friend. i think i think what you're asking is hey guys can i not squat <laughs> <laughs> no no i want to squat I mean, okay it's then, kind the, of like, then then the answer is to squat here's yeah, the deal yeah. You went 50 pounds yeah. over you jumped up yeah you leaped. what you did a box squat with and you just started so what you right. need to do, just like anything, look, anything you learn, uh, you have to start slow, especially if you feel any fear or apprehension. If you start to get, here's the deal. Here's what happens with technique and for, actually this happens with anything in life. You go meet a, a pretty girl. When you're scared, the words don't come out. You don't know what you're saying. And you sound like an idiot. So same thing when you're trying to work out, when that fear sets in, you look like an idiot. So in other words, go light, perfect the technique Practice the exercise, inch your way up. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong. There would have been nothing wrong with you doing the 135 for 10 reps in the back squat and then doing 135 for four reps in the full squat, which is what you did, and then leaving it at that. Well, listen, right, right. You, I know you've only recently kind of found us, and one of the things that we talk about a lot is just, is just practicing a yeah. movement. That's it's it. just getting in the That's going it. in the gym and practicing a movement and not we sometimes especially guys we overthink this the weight on the bar and we have to keep putting more weight on the bar and put more weight on the bar like the goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change if you hadn't been squatting for years yeah. 
and you squatted 50 pounds on your back and decided that I bet you'd see change results and improvement. So yeah. there's no, well, there was no reason for you to hop all the way up there other than the, the ego that us men it. have. You know, you're, uh, that's the thing is you just jump right to your potential. Your potential is massive, but you know, there's a, a real methodical way to get there. And, and we have to stick with that for now. We have to stick with that playbook and run it. Uh, and two, be able to acclimate to weight and, and uh, get that bracing technique down. And so to to be able to like get under the bar, like if you start increasing the weight, I want you to sit there and hold it, feel it, and 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 take that moment to really like brace and, and feel like you're under control, rack the weight again, and and get back to it another time and like ramp your way up. It's a very mm -hmm. uh, methodical, progressive way to approach it. I'll give you one piece of advice that's going to get you the best results across the board for the next year, okay? I want you to treat okay. every exercise like it's a skill you're trying to learn. That's it. So okay. when you go to the gym and you do the exercise and the and the you know the program says four reps or 10 reps, pick a weight that allows you to practice the exercise to perfect the skill. Don't pick a weight that's going to challenge the hell out of you. Practice the skill of the exercise over the next year. Number one, you won't get hurt doing that or very, very, very low likelihood of getting hurt. And number two, you're going to build muscle, burn body fat, and improve significantly. Mm -hmm. After that year is up and you feel like, man, I got the skill of these lifts. Like, I got it. I know I can do it. Then you can start playing with challenging yourself. But you're not compromising results. That's the point I want to make. Because a lot of times people think, well, okay, well, I'll practice the skill, but that means I'm not going to get results for a full year. No. You will get results the entire time if you do what I'm saying. So every single exercise is a skill. And like any skill, the better you are at the skill, the more you're going to get out of it. So what I did, uh, I, I completed phase one and fixed moving to phase two. What I did was I lowered the weight back to 135. And when I went down, I did, um, I think Adam mentioned this and, and some of you guys, you guys have all said this, the, um, tr controlling the tempo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would go, Beautiful. I would go down and I would try to hold that, for, you know, like That's a good exactly solid right. yep. one to two seconds and then you know, try to explode back up. Love Perfect. that. Love that. That's great. That's amazing. That's why that's how you should have started. I mean, mm -hmm. the way your your mindset of going into something like that, a lift that you hadn't been doing for a very, very long time, is back to Sal's point. It's just perfect the movement and put a weight on that's way lower than what you think you can do and if it's so easy then just slow it down slow it down and pause like yeah. justin was saying pause hold it literally practice your the core. movement yeah just just you want to get so good at the movement you can do it in your sleep you don't got to think about it it's become that easy for you and so approach mm -hmm. your lifting like that yeah, think about how much more you can grip the bar with your with your hands, which then translates to more support with your upper back, which then, you know, bracing that core and really, you know, digging into all the little nuances and feel your way through that so you feel supported and that's going to all come back to the confidence you're building. And imagine Justin uh, spotting you naked. This always <laughs> wow. helps me get out of the hole. For some reason when I think about like, uh, when yeah. I think about Justin behind me naked him. helping me out of that squat, I get out of that, that get out of that hole really you easy. don't want to be in that hole let me tell you <laughs> that's way too much of a visual there <laughs> that's when you get to the bottom of a squat justin you and doug i swear to god you're, you guys are terrible so jim is that the only program you have oh uh, yeah let's i want to actually give you symmetry because i think you'll benefit from map symmetry. symmetry i was yes. gonna say do you, do you have that program? Uh, i just picked i just picked up map symmetry oh, uh, good. cyber monday oh good oh, you're all right man. good you're yeah. set then are that's you in our forum uh, no. All right. We'll put you on our forum, Jim. Keep, keep, keep this whole year. I want you to kind of give us updates. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. You All got right, it, Jim. Man. Thanks for calling in, brother. I appreciate it. All right. I appreciate you. You got it. Right on. So, I, okay. I'm going to tell a story that this reminds me of. So, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is super popular. <laughs> Lots of people do it now, right? And the originators of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, you know, widely understood to be the Gracie family. Okay. I'll never forget this. Uh, Hickson, this is years ago. So Hickson Gracie's Cron, uh, son, Cron, went into like a world championship jiu-jitsu tournament and proceeded to submit every person. This is like black belt, top level, best ever. And he was, proceeded to submit every opponent with a mounted cross choke. Now, let me, let me explain what that is. That is one of the first submissions you learn in jiu-jitsu. It is basic. Mm -hmm. They teach you how to defend it. It is, but here's, here's why he was able to do that. And the Gracie's are exceptional at this. They'll practice a basic technique, slow and perfect 
and then a little faster, and then perfect. They'll practice it so much, they get so good at it. So proficient. That yeah. you know what they're going to do. Because yeah. each person he went against knew, oh, he's going to do that, and they couldn't stop it. Yeah. This is the value of practicing the fundamentals and getting good at them. By the way, I'm sure you've heard that in a lot of other sports where you uh, yeah. you, you master the fundamentals. So you want to do your, 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 your spin, you know, backhanded pass or whatever. Practice the fundamentals, get perfect at them. And then watch your performance. And it's true with strength training as well. Our next caller is Johnny from Scotland. Johnny, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, hey how's it going? Pretty good. What's up, man? man? Yeah. Uh, so we'll just get the, the usual thanks there. You guys are probably sick of it now. But uh, <laughs> thank you for all the, the content that you guys do. And, you know, all the guys behind the scenes. Uh, a guy from my work actually got me on to you guys about a year ago. I remember listening to the first episode and... Uh, hearing Adam talking about taking his son to the, the cinema and I was like, what? I thought this was health and fitness. <laughs> and, you know, the more the more I listened to it and got in all the, the dad chat, you know, I've, I've got a young kid myself, so it was great. I ended up pushing away the other health and fitness podcast I was listening to. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Thank right you. All right. right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just read my email out, just go through a bit of the, uh, the added info and then ask my question at the end. So, 32 years old, 5 foot 10, about 110 kilo or 242 pounds with around 30 to 35% body fat, according to my digital scale and my smartwatch. Uh, I've been lifting on and off since 2014, but with no real structure, uh, doing various sports uh, before taking lifting a bit more serious in 2021 when I started doing a strength program through my, my gym. So I managed to get my numbers up between 2021, 2022, which I assume was due to beginner gains because I hadn't trained properly uh, and a big increase in calories. Um, I never counted them. I just thought more food equals more strength. Um, so I'm paying the price of that now, I suppose. Um, so then got on you guys, uh, got anabolic, started training through that. My strength went up even further. Uh, then moved on to powerlift because we had a, an in-house powerlifting competition. So I thought I would go into that, but I ended up getting ill with some gut issues. Um, so I was out of training for about five, six weeks. And when I went back, strength had just completely depleted as expected. Um, so I started working on my, my calories. I was on uh, 2,000, 2,300 um, to see what my weight would do. Didn't really move. I then went on to the macro calculator you guys have and it suggested 2150 so i done that but it wasn't for long end up going back to 2300 thinking if i just get more protein i might see something happen uh, especially with, with lifting i wanted to get my strength back um but the, the weight doesn't seem to move it's, it's hard to tell if i'm getting stronger because you know i'm trying to regain the strength that i had before um so but i'm, I'm Curious just to know there's a guy at my work who's about 65 kilo and eating 3,500 calories for maintenance. And you know, I'm a bigger guy and I'm at maintaining at 2,300. So I'm, my question is, do I try and boost my metabolism with uh, reverse dieting? Or is it just, you know, you're going to have to reduce those calories to, to lose some body fat? Well, if, uh, what, do we, what do we know about the gut? What's going on? Did you fix your gut issue, by the way? Did you figure that out? So I ended up getting a bug. Me and my wife got like food poisoning okay. and it, okay. it seemed to cling to me and it knocked everything. Uh, we were getting checked for like celiac, like gluten intolerance that came back negative. I'd done intolerance tests and found that there was a wheat, rice, coconut and peas. So I eliminated that for four weeks. It got better, but it's not hundred percent retook the intolerance test rice is back it says that it could cause issues but wheat is definitely out okay you might have some uh leaky, leaky gut syndrome or inflammation that needs to, get, needs to get addressed but that that i would work on with a functional medicine practitioner i right, two things one don't ever compare your calories to somebody else because there's a lot we don't understand about the metabolism there really is i mean you just you just you know you just called it out it's like a skinny small dude over there big 
dude over there, the small dude eats way more calories. What the hell is going on? We don't quite know. Um, so that's a big mistake. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll comparing yourself to someone else is going to make what works for your body seem strange when in reality, it's just, it's, it's an individual variance. Second thing is your body fat test on this, on this electronic competing scale says 30%. You don't look like you're 30% body fat unless you have, unless you store it all in your midsection and lower body, you look maybe in the twenties at the most. So I would get a body fat test that might be a little bit more accurate. I mean, you look like you have a lot of muscle on your frame. Is, is yeah, I definitely caught it more on my, my midsection. Okay. 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 So look, here's what I would, I would have you do. You can reverse diet. You can definitely have, you can definitely reverse diet or you could just try to hit your target body weight and protein and avoid heavily processed foods and then see where your body weight, where your body weight lands. And that's it. I would literally just, you know, what's, what's your target body weight? Where, where would you like to go? I mean, I've never really thought about what weight I wanted to come down to. It was more just to get into a, a healthy body fat percentage. Mm. You know, what? the goal is to just be healthy. I'm not bothered. Even if I weighed the same weight, but you know, I was, I was healthy. I would be, I would be happy. What's your body weight again? 240 pounds. You said. Yeah, 242 pounds, I think I converted it to. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, you know, I, I say, you know, we could you could start by hitting about 215 to 220 grams of protein a day from whole natural foods, avoid heavily processed foods, and just start there and just see yeah, what happens. So, how do you so, feel How do you feel at uh, the, the 21 to 2,400 calories? Do you feel like you're really restricting to be at that number? Does that feel comfortable for you? What, how do you feel about that amount of calories besides comparing yourself to somebody else? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, the 2,300, 2,400 is fine. Um, I'm kind of like, I know what I'm going to eat, a plan what I'm going to eat uh, for the week. Um, so I, I can calculate, you know, if, it, if I eat this, is that going to screw up how much protein I'm going to get for that day? Like everyone's kind of concentrating on making sure I hit my protein within my calories and then everyone else can kind of fall into place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of processed stuff, because for four weeks I couldn't eat wheat, anything with wheat or rice. Yeah. I mean, everything processed kind of has all that you know, stuff in it anyway. So, you know, Johnny, I just saw a study where they took uh, groups of people crossover study and they had one group eat a high protein diet the other group eat a low protein diet and the high protein diet built more muscle burn more body fat but here's the weird part the high protein diet was 300 calories higher than the low protein diet there seems to be a fat burning effect along with a muscle building effect from protein i think if you just hit those targets and protein from whole natural foods avoid heavily processed foods and just listen to your body. Don't stuff yourself. Yeah. Don't starve yourself. Just eat until you feel about 75, 80% full, as the as they, they say in Japan, and see how you feel. And then watch what happens. And my guess is you'll see a slow leaning out through that, and you shouldn't lose or notice any strength losses uh, by following that. That's the reason why I asked how he felt around those yeah. calories. I mean, if you feel pretty good and you don't feel like you're, you know, really restricting to be there, you don't feel like you're overstuffing, you're probably at a really good place for how you move and your your size. Uh, so I would stick right with it. And also something you said earlier that we can all get caught up in, right? And uh, I'm guilty of this, is comparing mm -hmm. uh, what you were lifting you know, before, like every time I, I, you know, fall off of my consistency and then I go back in the gym, I, I think of it as starting at square one. I cannot hold on to the numbers I was hitting when I was the most consistent peak. Otherwise you'll, that'll get discouraging. Like, Oh man, this is, I'm still, yeah, no I'm way. still so weak, but yeah. yet you could be progressing in many ways. Like you could be absolutely building muscle and healing your gut and all these positive metrics you but yet you're hung up on the oh my god my i'm so much weaker than what i was before you got to kind of throw that out the window and just be like listen i'm i'm trying to find the perfect balance for me be consistent and the truth is uh if you're doing it perfect it will be this real slow gradual process yeah. of losing a little bit of body fat building a little bit of I'm gonna, muscle i'm going to give you another metric instead of the scale and your body fat percentage based off the scale or your smartwatch um use a tape measure and measure around your waist, right where your belly button is. First thing in the morning, relaxed, and then measure that. If that's going down, you said you store more, most of it in your belly, like a lot of men do. 
if that's starting to go down, you're moving, you're, you're, everything's going great. You're doing good. Yeah. Sounds good. You got it, man. And you're following maps anabolic right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hanging about in the, the strength phase because I enjoy that one the most and mm -hmm. I work offshore. So it's going to be hard to train in a gym yeah. on an oil rig offshore, trying to lift heavy. Um, so I'm trying to wait until I go there to move into phase two where, you know, it's, I'm, going to be lifting weights that they're likely going to have or not going to go through the floor or anything like that. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything that helps you with mobility, like Prime Pro? Or suspension trainer with him, with him going on the rig like I don't that. know. Are you allowed to work out on the oil rig? Yeah, there's there's a gym. on The one that I'm going to has got quite a small gym, um, so it's it's usually pretty cramped. Oh. So it's kind of get in, get out. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've got Matt's Prime. Suspension trainer. Yeah, yeah suspension I'm, rubber band. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna send you map. One. I'm gonna send you map suspension because then that'll give you some suspension trainer exercises you could do while you're on the rig. Cool. Thank you very much. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in, huh? Yeah. Cheers, guys. Take it Cheers. easy, Johnny. Take it easy. I always picture like oil rig. You're like you watch movies. And he things. looks like uh, who would be. Yeah. I feel like that's the most manly job it's in the world. I don't dudes. know what the positions are. All I know is I see the videos where the you know, water spreader. It's like chaos chains and, and shit. Somebody's yeah. arms almost getting sucked in. And, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's up know. there with one of the more dangerous jobs, isn't yeah, it? I think it's like that and crab fishermen and like yeah. something else. It's uh, pretty crazy. No, for sure. Yeah, I hate you know. I, you know, it's funny for most God, for most men. This is probably more accurate for men than it is for women. For most men, a simple a simple waist circumference measurement is going to be one of the most accurate. That's what Doug. That's what Doug does, I know. right? I that's know. your that's your go to. That's, that's where yeah, I got no, it from. Yeah, yeah. yeah the scale the is BS. Yeah, total BS. Yeah. yeah. So that that's really the only accurate thing. The scale's fake. Plus, news. most dudes yeah. don't want to lose weight. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm an anomaly, but yeah. I don't want to lose weight. No, you want to get leaner. Yeah, I was leaner. Just keep my weight. That's yeah. it. Hundred percent. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free guides. Also, if you're a trainer or coach, you have to sign up for our free three-day training course for trainers and coaches that's happening in January. Doug, what is it? Is it mindpumptrainer.com? Uh, yes, mindpumptrainer.com. Mindpumptrainer.com. Sign up. It's free. It starts January 15th. I'll be talking directly to you to help you become more successful as a coach or personal trainer. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.